Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield talking to the new stars of Coronation Street. And it's always great when new characters come in because will we love them? Will we hate them? Will they cause trouble? Uh, will the ladies fall in love with them? Well, I've got a feeling they might do. Sam, uh, great to meet you. Nice to meet you, man. How are you? And Rob? Hello. Interesting. So I've spoken to the cast today and I'm trying to get my head around how you fit in. Were you going to be Mary's love child, something like that? No. So let's start with you. Um, Baldwin is your connection to the soap and this is how you're coming in. Well, yeah, Adam's uh, Barlow by name, but Baldwin by history. His dad was Mike Baldwin and um, his mum was Ken Barlow's daughter. So um, he's, he's very much in the mix of all, uh, both those dynasties, you know. And then, of course, the Ken Barlow connection continues with you. Mm -hmm. Yep, Ken had an affair, not an affair, sort of a, a thing with Denise in the 90s, and they had a son out of that, Daniel, and we last saw him when he was 12. Ken went to visit when he was 12. And what's interesting, William was just telling me that when they cast you, they looked for a mini him, and they found it. I mean, what a great compliment. The guy's been working for 50 years. He's one of the greatest legends in the country, yeah. uh, and he doesn't do bad for himself, so that's a nice compliment. It is. It is a really nice thing to have, have someone say, and I, I, during the audition process, didn't really think that much about it until right at the end when people started saying it to me. And I'd went back and watched the early episodes of Coronation Street. And when people had said that, I was then like, oh, right. Oh, I see. Yeah, I could see. But it's difficult with yourself, isn't it? Because you obviously don't walk around thinking, who do I look like? I was thinking about this. I went to Coronation Street a couple of weeks ago to do some interviews. And you drive through those two security doors and then you see a bit of it and you get that tingle. There's nothing quite like it. What is it like going through those gates knowing that you're going to end up in five weeks on the TV? It must be remarkable. Yeah, it's exciting. I think especially with Kate Oates coming into the show to produce it. I think she's a fantastic producer. What she did with Emmerdale was great. And uh, with the with the sort of monster that is Coronation Street in her hands, I think it's just going to be a really exciting place to be. Let's talk about you and find out a bit more about your lives and career. So, Sam, you were in it before. I was, yeah. I was. It was my first ever acting job back in uh, 2005, 2006. And um, yeah, I, I feel as though that myself and the, the character uh, will hopefully be very different this time around. Going back in, does it feel like an old pair of shoes that you're just going back into, or is this very new? Because you've changed obviously a lot yeah. since you were in it. It's funny because it's a real feeling of uh, old and new because the studios are new, uh, the producers, there's a lot of new cast members that are new that I, I've never met. but. There were a lot of old faces on the crew and also some of the cast uh, who remembered me. Um, so it was quite bizarre. It was like an old job in some ways, but a brand new job in lots of other ways. So, so yeah, hopefully, hopefully it continues that way, you know? And for you, Rob, walking through those doors and seeing that set that we've grown up with all our lives, mm -hmm. is there any way of explaining how magical that is? Um, I suppose if you ever went on the Coronation Street tour, you probably and have a bit of it, but no, it's different to know that you're working there, to be given one of the lanyards and ITV, there's your face, get through those doors and get at it. And you're like, there is, yeah, there's moments where if you're filming on the street, for example, you just suddenly clock where you are and you look around and you go, oh God, I'm actually on this street doing this with these people. This is so bizarre, but great. And then of course, you've got to actually deliver and perform or you'll be out the door. They haven't got time to mess around in this show. They're very busy. So the pressure not to cock up your first line, is there any way of explaining that pressure or did you just go into, I'm an actor and I can do this? No, there's definitely pressure. There's definitely a sense of, um you know, the size, the scale of this operation, because not only is the show massive and it's, and it's followed by a massive amount of people, has a massive history. We film a massive amount of work in the sense that we're, you know, they're, they're going out for five episodes a week, two and a half hours a week. Uh, for me personally, having uh, gone on to do a few other bits and pieces since I left Coronation Street, I've not filmed the pace of Coronation Street since. And it took me by surprise to come back into the show and realise how much they film here and uh, a lot of lines to learn. You know, there's not much time to get it wrong. You've got to be on the, you've got to be on the button. So yeah, the, that, that definitely took me by surprise the first few days. And um, I don't know how Rob felt, but it definitely took me by surprise. And I've got experience uh, of, of doing lots of different things, but yeah, it's, uh, it's just a case of getting up to speed. And once you're up to speed and you feel as though you're in the rhythm, then it's um, hopefully gonna continue mm. in, a, in a nice positive manner. What can you actually tell us? I mean, we know that Ken is currently not very well. I think we can say that. I haven't seen your episodes yet. How do you fit into that mix? Are you gonna help Ken or are you gonna cause him even more trouble? Well, I think that the initial 
intention is for everyone to come back to help Ken, but if anyone has ever had that situation happen where all the family comes back to rally around normally a figurehead of it, as much as everyone's intention is pure, it does tend to bring out all of those old arguments, intricacies, the dynamics of all the relationships, and and then they just bubble and bubble and bubble and bubble and bubble, but with a very good intention on it, which is to care for someone. So I think that's hopefully what you're going to see. And of course, I'm a deeply unattractive man, this is obvious. Uh, you two have been brought in as Totty, clearly. I mean, are you ready for the reaction you're going to get? Because in the old days, there wasn't social media. People will react instantly, and you'll get to see what they think of you, whether they like you, whether they fancy you, or whether they think you look like me. Are you ready for that? Because it's qu- going to be quite a big change. There's going to be millions of people watching you who can communicate you within a second. <laughs> well, I've got slight experience of that in the past. I mean, I, I when I first joined, it was the digital spy forums and whatnot that I would go on to get my feedback because it was before Twitter and uh, I don't really do that do you that's the worst (laughs) place to go if you ever want to know anything about yourself don't look on digital spot yeah well I learned the hard way you know (laughs) I learned the hard way I was getting absolutely slaughtered on it so um I I think this time around I'll be very wary of it I think every actor's got that sort of um Sadomasochistic. Is that a word? Say, was the word? It's a good word. It might not be the right one. <laughs> well, say, say, yeah. <laughs> it's not the time for police to get that word wrong. But I sort of, yeah, yeah. You know, they'll say to themselves that they won't really try. They won't. They won't try and look at Twitter and find out. But I think almost everyone does. I think. You can't help, can you? But it still wounds, doesn't it, when they say something nasty? You know, that you look like a walrus or something like that. Not that you guys have had that. What about you? Um, well, I don't really have much experience with it, but um, I did do a couple of episodes of Emmerdale last year and got a really nice feedback on Twitter which I did see Um, but then I have trusted friends obviously who think it's hilarious to go and dig through <laughs> dig through the, the depths of the internet screen grab it and send it send things yeah. that people have written and said and drawn and, and a lot of it's good and some of it's really quite out there yeah well I think I think the reality is that you have to realise that there are going to be some people that like you and some people that don't and hopefully the majority of people like you. But those who don't often have a louder voice, don't they? They come forward for... Yeah, I think it's human nature as well. You know, if you, if you get 10 people saying, uh, giving you a reaction to something and nine are positive and one's negative, that one negative will bear in your mind a lot longer than others. And it's just human nature. I think that, that always happens with actors. But I think as long as the overwhelming majority is in favour and, and everyone is enjoying what we're doing or what I'm doing, then... Um, then it gives it a chance to grow and evolve from there. What an amazing opportunity for you both. We're going to wrap it up there, but I want to wish you both well. I can't wait to see the episodes. A brilliant soap to be in. Mm -hmm. Two great casts coming in with Ken. It doesn't get any bigger than that. I wish you both well. Thanks for talking to me. Thank you very much. Cheers. Cheers.